untie this little crawdad, which is this dude right here. And uh, a technique that this is made for is under an indicator. Um, I didn't realize how uncommon it was for people to um, not really fish streamers or little crawdad imitations underneath indicators. I'm um, just, you know, talking to everybody at the shop and stuff. I, you know, on the river all the time is just kind of something I did quite a bit. It works really good, and that's... Um, I mean, it, it works extremely good, and uh, if you look at, you know, prey, um, streamers under a bobber is getting really, I mean, it, it, for good reason, getting popular. And a lot of the Rockies and stuff, um, eastern Washington, um, uh, places in Oregon for sure, um, and if you kind of view the prey, predator and prey, um, generally speaking, you know, really healthy fish, which are... Um, not always prey, not typically prey, because the, um, they're going to move too fast. They're going to put up too much of a struggle for for bigger fish to eat, right? So they don't want to um, they don't want to use more calories and potentially use all the calories to not catch their prey um, than they than they get, right? So we're trying to think of like basic predator prey mode here, and um, you know it's always like the the weak link, right? That gets eaten. Um, in the wild so we're gonna exploit that here and use that to our advantage uh, you know and when you've seen like everybody's had that little um, goldfish right you get at the fair that lasts about a week and as uh, you know as they're dying they're like turning to the side and they're not really active then they kind of have this moment of like oh man I'm dying and they like you know uh, go like you know, they jolt forward maybe like, you know, a couple inches or whatever, then they turn back over on their side. And we've all kind of seen that running around the rivers if you pay attention. You know, the little bait fish and the critters and stuff, you know, in the little pools and stuff as we're going out to the river, like you'll see that. And that's basically what this imitates is a, is a, either like this tonight's a crawdad, but I'll do a streamer here in a couple of days. Um, you know, it's like it got beat on the head or whatever, and it's not in good shape and, and uh, it's not going to make it. And that's what we're, trying to imitate is a dead drift imitation of an otherwise healthy fish you know like crawdads in the rocks and stuff uh, uh, bait fish typically are not in areas where they're vulnerable to trout um, and so uh, they're having a bad day you know and, and they're having a tough tough go of life and uh, so basically we'll throw this under an indicator and about every 10 feet or so just give it a little pop and then it takes like the hey I'm, I'm alive um, but I'm not really, you know, I'm barely alive. And that's just um, going off of that pure predator prey drive of like, that's the weak link, that's the one I'm going to eat. Uh, and that's what this is about. So this dude, I mean, he's not big. Um, uh, try to find like a dime or something. I got a, a dime, you know, if we look at the overall size of this thing, this is just a little baby crawdad. Um, and I started doing this years ago. A buddy of mine on the Yellowstone told me um, when we were going over there, um, you know, warned me my first trip over there, warned me about, you know, the plethora of whitefish and fishing copper johns and all the normal stuff, you know, he'd probably pretty much be in whiteys all day. And uh, he told me about his uh, crawdad adventure and, and crawdad success. So I tied up some crawdads and lo and behold, we, we weren't really in the whitefish, but man, we were in some really tanker rainbows um, fishing just the meat um, that big fish eat, but just in a different way. Uh, and it proved to be ultimately really successful and it has uh, an interest in Washington for me uh, I've used these on the Deschutes with awesome success um, you know fish eat all kinds of stuff right and if, if you get an easy high calorie meal uh, you know they're gonna eat it so um, so this is a 90 degree aqua uh, jig hook and a size 8 and this is a 530 seconds or 3.8 millimeter bead and throw this dude up here like that and we're going to lash her on. Get her in there pretty good. And we're going to work all the way back. And I usually don't tie any of the jigged flies. Most of the flies you see, you know, they'll just keep the fly like this. Um, and I like to tie them just a little, little more 
up and down, if you will. So I'll, I'll take the time to um, I'll take the time to uh, flip it over, and, and it's kind of a pain, but you'll see. Uh, you can use a lot of different dubbings. Um, I like for this modeling. This is the um, UV2 um, Spirit River Dubbing Enhancer Light uh, color, and it just uh, you can't really see that with the reflection, but we'll see uh, out of the package. It just glows. I don't know, and the camera's not. It's just not going to pick it up. But at any rate, um, you just I guess have to trust me on this one. But this stuff's really bright under UV light, and not, I don't know how fish see, I don't know if it makes a difference, like, I honestly don't know, um, but, you know, whatever, man, it can't hurt, uh, it, there seems to be something to it, um, but I don't know, it makes me feel better, so that's what I'm using. So I'm just going to tie just a tiny little bump right on the end. Um, this one here was tied out of semi-seal and uh, the semi-seal is just a really awesome buggy dubbing and you can you know the more it gets fished the more it gets picked out and the cooler it looks so that's another good option that's just standard brown semi-seal uh, little antennas are gonna be just a stripped stripped hen uh, if you got some if you got some hackles that have uh, some chopped up feathers, you know, and they're they're just not going to work for any any flies that you know soft hackles or anything like some of the feathers are broken. Use those. Uh, just look around in your in your hackles and just find some that just aren't ideal, you know, for using um, for wrapping. You can just use the stems and get some use out of them. So I'll tie these in one at a time on each side. And I tie them in one at a time because I want them. I don't want them to roll on top. I want them to. I want to keep them like that one just did. That's the problem. If you tie them in together, they'll kind of V over the top of this dubbing bump. So instead of being off to the side, having the the bump in the middle spreading them apart, they'll roll and they'll V on top of the dubbing bump, and it defeats the whole purpose of having this dubbing bump here. And you'll know you did it right when you pull, and you can kind of see them move. You see that top one kind of move out and splay out. Bam, bam. Cut them off. And the only reason I'm doing this on what we'll say the bottom side, what will end up being the bottom side, because a lot of this we're going to flip over, is because it's easier to do that right now. Uh, this material here that I'm using, if I can find it, this is the Pro Sport Fisher Flexi Skin. It's like thin skin. Uh, it's got a really cool modeling to it, um, and I like it a lot. It's really easy to work with, and it, it makes really cool shellbacks. Uh, I'm going to use the brown, but they have olives. They have all kinds of different colors, you know, yellows, uh, pinks for shrimps, you know, things like that. Uh, I'm going to flip this over now because now we're going to get into the hard part. So I'm going to cut, just cut a little piece here. And measure it, you know, we're going to be just a little, we're going to be like, if we, if we measure it against the bead, the width of the bead. Now take your scissors, measure the, the width of the bead there. We're going to be about one and a half times, eh, maybe almost two times, one and three quarter width of the bead. You know, that's the width of the bead over there. So one and a half, somewhere around there. Doesn't have to be uh, totally exact. And on this one, I'm just going to cut a little sharp taper in it. Like that. Peel it off the backer. I got a shiny side and a dull side. I want the dull side to face up, so I'm going to tie it dull side down. This is always the funnest part of this whole thing. So just weasel it under the hook there and just start wrapping it. 
towards the back. There's going to be a hook in the way and it's going to be a giant pain in the butt, but um, I just think it's cooler making a fly like this rather than tying the whole fly upside down. Uh, eyes. These crayfish have really bulgy, predominant eyes on them, and I think eyes in any kind of uh, bait fish or prey um, scenario, I think eyes really help a lot, and I think it gives the fish like a trigger point. Um, so anytime you can add eyes that make sense, obviously on like a size 16 mayfly, it doesn't make much sense. If you want to do it, it's cool. It makes a really cool fly. But um, anything big enough to throw eyes on, um, I'm a true, true believer in. And these are just black mono mono eyes. Um, if I was tying uh, the the like the green mono eyes, if you can find them, they're not they're like an opaque olive. Those things are really good too. A lot of these crayfish have those like opaque eyes to them. So we're gonna just throw this a little bit behind even them up here and I can't believe I haven't broken my thread yet that's like a miracle all right cool got our eyes and I'm gonna dub and figure it around these eyes This thread, I guarantee at some point through this, I'm going to break my thread on that hook point, but maybe we'll get lucky. Another cool dubbing you can use uh, is the same, um, it's the same enhancer, but you can use like the dark seal, which is this stuff here. It's a really good, it's almost like a rainbow, like the rainbow scud dub, but, um, um, brighter colors in it you know it's just cool you could reuse that rainbow scud up for this too i mean any dubbing will work we're just trying to match like the crayfish around um where we're fishing and they come in you know just a huge array of colors so you you have like mega options um as far as what colors you want to tie um, but i've tied them usually like in a brown rusty orange traditional I don't usually do the full rusty orange traditional crayfish because uh, the um I don't see them that color as often but I see uh, a lot of brown like the smell these little these little ones I see a lot of browns and stuff like that this stuff dubs really tight which is cool all right get you on there. Alright, now I'm going to pull down this shell back here, pull it hard, pop it around the eyes. That was a clip I'm going to move because I'll just keep hitting that thing. Tie it up, bring it back, and tie it back. The only thing we're doing there is adding segmentation. Uh, like a hard segment, right? Something that we're not going to just rip through. I want to create a clear separation on that. So we bring it forward. We're evened up so we don't have a thread gap here. Bring it back. It's going to be in our way, but, you know, just have to deal with it. Um, claws. Claws are, are kind of... You know, you can use like the little plastic claws and stuff, which are they're really cool. Uh, I'm just going to use a little piece of pine squirrel here. I'll measure it out to be, you can always clip it later, but you know, I'm going to have it uh, a little tiny bit shorter than our antenna. So about like that. So I'm going to clip this further back. I've pinched where I'm going to have my fur exposed. I'm just going to clip off the fur here. And this will give me my exact 
point of tie-in so um, A I can measure my second claw here and B I don't f forget like where I was when I measured these out Evened up enough. Eh, this one needs a little more, maybe. Okay. He's having like a natural curvature to him, so I'm going to have him come in around the fly. Actually, you know what? I'm going to forget one little step. I'm going to dub a little bit past the eyes. Right where the fur meets the uh, the part we've cut off. Time one. Take a look and see that's like lame because I got it upside down. So we're going to redo it. This is always... These things like to roll. These hides are really thin and... You know, a way if it keeps rolling on you, just throw a little dubbing down there and give yourself a little bigger base, you know, for this thing to grab onto, and uh, um, it won't do that as bad. Which I may end up doing if this thing fights me. I can show you. Are you gonna fight me? You're gonna fight me. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna grab any dubbing. So this dubbing's close. I have no idea even what it is. But it's close, and I can get it on the hook, or on the thread. And all I'm going to do, instead of having this flat, you know, little wider hide, trying to tie it on to this hook, I'm going to just put some dubbing down. Run my thread over the top. Pack it in tight. And now I've created a much bigger platform for this hide to rest on and in theory it should go on way way easier I hope that makes sense uh, as to why that worked but you just you know you're not trying to roll this fat hide again not even fat but in this term against the hook shank it's much bigger much wider um, we're just not trying to put like this bigger piece of leather without it spinning you know on a skinny hook shank so that's what we're doing okay tied up got our claws looking good make sure we're all evened up that looks pretty good to me all right now i'm gonna find another hen hackle and you know, you can find these things in like every color you used to be able to. I don't know if you can today necessarily. Hopefully you got some laying around. Saddle works too. You got to be a little careful with the sizing on some of the saddle. Smaller schloppen is going to work great. Um, but, you know, I got these just over the years. I've collected these awesome little hen, hen saddles and hen capes and stuff. And this is a saddle here. But um, they've, they've just over the, you know, you can get them in like, just an array of colors if you just keep your eye out and they're cheap uh, cheap enough like seven bucks a lot of times and if you find a cool one just grab it because they have just endless endless uses so I'm going to tie this one in tip first and there's a concave to each feather right you can see these feathers are facing downward if we face it up it's it's all about which uh, which way you wrap it. So if I tie this with these facing up and I go to wrap it, all these feathers are just going to naturally go forward. And since we want the fly, since this is where all the legs are going towards the back, I'm going to tie it with the concave down. And when I go to wrap it, it'll just naturally sweep those fibers down. That's it for that. I'm going to dub a little bit more once I find where I put the dubbing at. Alright, 
just a little bit, tiny bit of dubbing. I'm going to grab some flexi floss. I thought I had some cool barred stuff. Yeah, this stuff will look really good. So this is the MFC sexy floss. Always like variegation. Again, these have a mega, mega curl to them, which um, this is how it's going to come out. So I want that curved in towards the fly. That's why I love these. I love these legs just because it has this curvature to it. It works awesome on nymphs. Uh, it works really good on dries. I love that curvature inward on these things. It just looks so buggy and so natural. Okay, tie those in. Add a little dubbing. Okay, right here, I'm going to wrap my hen around. We're only probably going to get two or three turns, so I'm going to spread them out far. Go in between the two legs, that's important, that keeps them separated. mess going on there again we're going to over accentuate the goods right I shouldn't say again because I haven't said this yet but the theory here is we I want to over accentuate the things I can so like legs like even on stoneflies legs are a big part of that bug they're kicking around they're doing their thing so the things that we can do right with the fly and draw attention to the right things I want to um, accentuate and the things like little eyes and stuff on mayflies, um, you know, even stone nymphs and stuff, um, it doesn't matter as much because it's so small, so I'm not going to care about that as much. So you want to do what you can focus on good, you want to accentuate and maybe exploit a little bit, right? Because trout don't necessarily look at what's wrong with the fly because that's, I mean, the whole reason we can have a hook tied to this fly and have it work is they're, you know, luckily for us, they're optimists. So they don't look about what's wrong with the fly, they look about what's right with the fly. So the more things we can have right, uh, the better off we're going to be, and a few of those things that we have wrong doesn't really matter so much, like a, like a hook or you know, a tippet or a leader or whatever. So anything we can show the fish that, they're, that looks like food um, that they're used to seeing, uh, we want to really accentuate. So on the crowdad here, um, by the way, I'm typing in, tying in uh, some small copper wire. Um, for the crowdad, it's going to be, um, if you look at these things in the wild, you know, the, the predominant feature, what in the hell did I do? There we go. Um, the predominant features are the claws, right? That's a huge, huge part of the, of the, of the crowdad. And then the legs, these legs fishing forward. And since we have a big enough fly to put eyes on and the crowdad flies are prominent in the actual crowdad itself, we want to add those too, just like bait fish. Um, eyes are a big deal. Um, generally speaking, I, I, I mean, I feel, and uh, the people that I know that are, are really awesome anglers, they, they most of them feel the same way, um, that, you know, eyes are important and, and, and bigger bugs that have eyes, and they use them as a target feature, and I think that's true um, in saltwater species too. I think most people would agree, maybe not all, but I'll generalize and say most. So add a little dubbing past... Um, our legs here. I'm gonna go right. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more here. I think I don't want such a sharp bite into that bead. Okay, right our bead. So I'm gonna take my shell back here. And I'm not going to, well, first I want to separate this hackle. 
make a little platform for this puppy to sit down onto. And I don't want to tie this off yet because I don't want these like... It's kind of with this jig hook, right? It's kind of like a little, it's a weird angle and we're going to end up with the like lumps, right? That I don't want in there. So I'm just going to hold it. I'm going to wrap my rib. Make sure I like what I'm seeing. You see how it's like pushing up against this eye of the hook? Second wrap. So we can get it really nice and even if we don't uh, tie it off first. Are we gonna get four? I would like four. Three is usually what I get. Four. If I pull it tight, I'll get four. Let's just pull it tight and get four. I'll pop you up. Well, you know what? I can pull it even tighter than that. All right, let's let's see what this wire is made of. Bam! Look at that. All right, pull tight. Lift this up. Tie off the wire. Bam! finish bam all right that's looking pretty good minus this little thread and <clears throat> I'm gonna cut over the eye of this jig hook find out where you are Okay. Normally, I would zap a gap this down over the eye of the hook. I'm out of, well, I'm not out of zap a gap. There's some in the bottle. I just physically am not um, strong enough right now to open the bottle because it uh, seized itself shut and I'll probably break the plastic. So, like the many, many people out there, I've got half a bottle of zap a gap that I'm going to have to throw away. And I was going to show you a trick to that, but I screwed up and I didn't do it myself. So this thing's like locked in tighter. Um, but the trick is for your zappa gap, for your um, brush on, if you can get it unscrewed, like you get a nice new bottle, throw a little dubbing wax over the threads. And when you crank it down, that wax will keep it from doing exactly what that just did. Um, and then just if you just add some wax every now and then um, any of the zappa gap that wants to glue the plastic together it'll hit the wax and you can get it open so uh, for whatever reason maybe I did it at one time and then I just didn't do it because it'll wear you know it'll get rid of itself after a while but so what I'm going to do here is take a little bit of the pro UV because it's the best glue whoa 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 that's a lot okay just drop that's like one I just wasted like five dollars so I'm gonna throw it just on each side of the bead here put this down make sure I've got an open make sure it's nice and open hit it with the lamp this is an oldie but a goodie. Remember that, anybody? Clear cure goo lamps. I, uh, it'll go through the skin, which is nice too. So that's going to be a permanent. Um, that's going to be a permanent glue. But my, uh, I dropped my nice Infinity Loon lamp, and it uh, shattered last night. So that was not ideal. All right. This is a cool bug. I gotta say. All right. So I'm gonna just a little bit of a little crawdad tail there. I'm going to cut these legs pretty short because this isn't like a huge crawdad. We're tiny little baby, non threatening, anybody can eat me type of crawdad. Even a, even a 14 incher can eat me. Um, 
But this dubbing there, now you can see it, right? This dubbing just glows. And again, I don't, I don't know if it makes a difference, but it makes me feel better. Everybody else is convinced it makes a difference, and you know, a lot of people know a lot more than I do, so um, I'll play follow the leader on that one for sure. So here's our little crowd at. Let's do it uh, under an indicator, under a bobber. You could euro it if you want. I don't think it's going to sink quite fast enough for that with these claws. Um, but you can definitely, you know, try it. But this dude um, will really, really fish well um, for you on on any trout stream that has bigger rainbows. You mean like a saving on the Deschutes? Um, it fishes just great. Yeah, that's kind of a lame view, but yeah, here's here it is right there. So try it on your next uh, river under a bobber. Give it a little pop, you know, just a little rod tip pop about every 10 feet. Um, if you're feeding down line, which I always recommend on an indicator, um, you know, learn how to feed line and feed it fast so you keep all the tension off. Uh, and every once in a while, just give it a little pop, you know, um, and give it a little bit of life through through the through the drift. But uh, you know, it's just weak, man. This thing's like ready to ready to get eaten. Uh, weak link got hurt, maybe banged his head against a rock or something, and he's not doing so hot. So easy, easy meal. Um, we're we're gonna totally exploit just the full-on predatory nature of uh, of these fish. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have an awesome time with it. I hope you find as much success with it as I have. And uh, thanks a ton.